The Shemitah is an ancient mystery. It goes back over 3,000 years to Moses, Mount Sinai. Yet it is affecting everything from 9-11 to the rise and fall of the economy to the crashing of the stock market to the rise and fall of nations. Everything from World War I, World War II, what is happening right now and what will happen. It is the most precise, mind-boggling, biblical mystery and it's coming true now. The Shemitah means the release, but it can, or it could also mean, literally, it can also mean the fall or the collapse in Hebrew. It can also mean the shaking. And what it, what it is is this. In Mount Sinai, God gave this law to Israel. Every seventh year, you would have a Sabbath year, a year of rest. That rest was called the Shemitah. There was no sowing, no reaping of the land. And on the last day of the Shemitah, the, the day is called Elul 29 on the biblical calendar. On that last day, something unique happens. All credit is wiped away, all debt is wiped away. The financial accounts of the nation are wiped clean. Now, this was to be a blessing, but when Israel turned against God, the Shemitah comes back as a sign of judgment on a nation that is driving God out of its life. So this is where it affects us particularly today. So the thing is that the Shemitah affects, as you can see, the economy right away. It's, it, it's, today it would be a, a recession or a depression. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the, the, the Wall Street, it literally is the collapse of, the, of, of, of our financial realm. The keys are, number one, you have the, the seven-year cycle. So the seven-year cycle, everything stops, and then you have this financial wipeout. In 586 BC, wiped out Jerusalem. They were in Babylon for 70 years, and the Bible says it was because it was timed according to how many Shemitahs they broke. So it becomes this amazing thing. If you look at the last 40 years of our financial history, you look for there's five great turning points or long term collapses combined often with recessions. When did they take place? I'll give you an example. 1973, first one. Second one, 1980. Third, 1987. Fourth, 2000. And fifth, 2007. Great recession. What do you notice about all of them? Every one of them is separated by a seven-year period. I mean, 73 to 80, seven years. 80 to 87, seven years. 2000 to 2000, seven years. Are any of them linked specifically to the year of the Shemitah? 1973, year of the Shemitah. 1980, Shemitah. 87, Shemitah. 2000, Shemitah. Uh, 2007, the Shemitah. Every mm. single 100% of them happened according to the appointed time in the Bible. Some of these things went down to the seconds. So if you go, listen, the, take it larger. Go to the greatest crashes in, in history, and you'll find, do, do any of them take place linked to the year of the Shemitah? The majority of them do. I mean, I'll give you an example. The, the, this is the third greatest crash in history, 1937 and 38. When does the Shemitah happen? 1937 and 38, same, same year. In fact, when the Shemitah begins, the next day, Wall Street collapses. Here's another one, the Great Recession. When, when does that happen? It is 2007 and 8. When does the Shemitah happen? 2007 to 8. And on the exact day of the Shemitah uh, appointed to wipe away the financial accounts, Elul 29, the whole stock market collapses. The Great Depression is even linked to this. When you have this peak day of the, Depre of, of the Shemitah, right after that comes the greatest month collapse in American history. I mean, it is mind-boggling. Oh, yeah. At the end of the Second World War, height of American power, they, there's a plan to build a new tower that's going to represent it, uh, America's greatness. It's the World Trade Center. It is, 1945 is the year of the Shemitah. The tower is, is conceived, the World Trade Center, year of the Shemitah. It's begun to, they start building it in 1966, year of the Shemitah. It, it, it's built for seven, a seven-year cycle, the exact cycle of the Shemitah, seven years of the Shemitah. Finished in 1973, year of the Shemitah. And then, finally, 2001, it's destroyed in the year of the Shemitah. Now, here's, the, here's a link. Now, what's the, the towers? Towers are about rising. The Shemitah is about falling. Actually means let fall. The, the tower is about the glory of man. The Shemitah is about humbling the pride of man or the pride of a nation. So here we see in the Bible, you know, the Shemitah wipes out accounts we saw that are built up. It also wipes out realities that are built up too. And so here in the year of the Shemitah, actually as the Shemitah gets to its peak, that's when 9-11 happens. 9-11 happens at the peak of the Shemitah, the last week, when it's getting ready for the, the day of nullifying, wiping things out. And actually, the, the collapse of the tower causes the collapse of Wall Street. You have the greatest, so you have the, the collapse of a tower, 
pride, I mean, the pride of a nation, and, and you have the collapse of Wall Street at the same time on the day of the Shemitah, which means that even the timing of 9-11 was determined, had to be determined exactly by the ancient mystery of the Shemitah. And what it, here's the prophetic things with this, Sid. This is just one of the things, that if the rise of a tower speaks of the rise of a nation, what does the fall of a tower speak of? It speak, it's a warning of the future of America. You know, this tower also, the tower that's rising now, was conceived in the year of the Shemitah at the same time with that vow that, that about defiance that was made on Capitol Hill. And it's probably going to be completed, most likely, in the year of the Shemitah that's coming. So that's just a little bit of the Shemitah and the tower. But this also is about the rise and fall of nations. The Shemitah gives the key about when nations rise and fall it has to do with America. Let me give you an example how, it, how this mystery is so big, it's affected everything. Uh, Shemitah. It actually can be taken as, I said, shaking or falling or collapsing. 1917, you have, you have the year of the Shemitah. You have a collapse on Wall Street, but you also have a shaking of the nations called the First World War. The Shemitah is about collapsing. That, in that war, you have the collapse of powers, collapse of four empires, the German Empire, the Hungarian, the Russian, the Ottoman, all collapse. In the year linked to the Shemitah. And you also have, it's linked to, the Shemitah is linked to the rise of nations. 1917 is the year that begins America's rise of world power on the stage. It enters world, the, the First World War. This is considered that. And so you have the beginning of this rise. But if you take it uh, four Shemitahs later, which is 28 years, interesting, four in the Bible is a number of kingdoms. It takes you to 1945, and you have another global cataclysm. You have the shaking of the world, shaking uh, World War II coming. You have, the, you have literally, actually, you know, Hitler's uh, attacks began in 1938. That was the year of the Shemitah. Goes seven years till 1945 until it's over. Saint Shemitah, the Holocaust, begin, Kristallnacht. It's, it's noted as 1938 as the fateful year. Year of the Shemitah. Ends 1945, year of the Shemitah. It, you, when you reach the peak of, of, the, war, of the Shemitah, you, you also get the peak of World War II, summer of 1945. You're approaching the Shemitah's day of nullifying things. Well, this is the day of wiping out. Uh, unleashed on the world is the greatest power of wiping out ever. Atom, the atomic uh, nu uh, nuclear warfare comes on at the end of World It's like this crescendo. The war ends in the last week of the Shemitah, this whole seven-year period. And when the, and actually in Berlin, the Allies have a victory parade. It's on the day of the end of the Shemitah. I mean, so world history, this, this launches America as the superpower of the world, even the Cold War, in the year of the Shemitah. Now, now if you go, you go one more period, you go four Shemitahs later, 28 years, Shemitah can mean also the fall of a nation. It gets you to 1973. Key point. 1973, America decides to legalize the killing of unborn children. Same sin ancient Israel was judged for. And that same year also is the year America loses its first war. Vietnam collapses on the same day, August 15th, that America won the war before in the other Shemitah. And so you have this thing of the fall of the fall now. And in the same year of that fall, you have the World Trade Center, which marks the same years that America legalized the killing of its children. The Shemitah begins September 25th. I can remember it's my happens to be my birthday, so it's easy. <laughs> September 25th, and then it goes till September 13th, 2015. Now, let me tell you. Now, a few things. One is two cautions. God doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't happen, necessarily have to happen every time. However, other caution is he can. And the thing is that that what the pattern is generally this. At the beginning of the Shemitah, you don't necessarily know. Listen, I am. <laughs> if I was God, I wouldn't even be waiting for a Shemitah with all of that. I, I mean, what we're doing is we're poking our finger in God's eyes uh, as a nation here in the United States. I mean, I'm glad that I'm not God. God's got so much more mercy than me. But if you study the Bible, he does have a point of judgment. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's the dangerous thing, because when you combine this all together, where America's going, when you combine the harbingers appearing and continuing, when you combine the Shemitah, that's, that's the thing. The thing is this, in the last two Shemitahs, this is 2001, 2000, and 2001, and then it's Seven 2007 years, and right? eight. yeah. You had it, it, the mystery is getting more and more precise and intense. It's a buildup because uh, in 2001, you have the greatest stock market collapse in, in history happens on the exact, exact day appointed in the Bible, Alul 29, to wipe out the financial accounts. Seven years later, 
2008, you have the other greatest crash in American history, bigger, and it happens on the exact same day appointed in the Bible. The two greatest crashes happen exactly seven Hebrew years apart, down to the days, the hours, to the seconds. So the mystery is getting more intense. Hey, you know, I, he's going so fast, yeah. I, want, I want you to catch. It is so precise what he's saying. It's the year, the day, mm -hmm. the second. I mean, what an awesome God we serve. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, what this indicates, Sid, is this, there's an intensifying that means that the nation, we are progressing towards judgment. And that's exactly what's happening. It's in America. So, now, again, God doesn't have to do anything when we say, but I'd be aware. All you, right, tell me the exact date it starts and it ends. September 25th, and, and that's the start. Of this and, year. And usually, again, at the beginning, it's not, and it's not necessarily so noticeable, but if something is chosen for this year, then it's usually as it gets, it builds up to its peak, that's usually when things happen, okay? Which is September 13th of 2015. Now, there's also, you know, we've talked about this before, Go happens to be with the blood moon period as well. You know, mm -hmm. because, because the blood moon period is a year and a half, well, we're in that half part, but the year, the, what's left, is totally Shemitah. So it's all happening at the same time as Shemitah. It's and, like a convergence of warnings. It seems, and, and, the, and the other thing is that, here's another thing, Sid. In, in the Bible, one of the signs of judgment is the darkening of the sun. Now, we're not saying every eclipse is, however, there's something there. Here's the thing, get this. When that big, that peak day comes, Elul 29, it's going to be a solar eclipse on marking that day, the great day of nullification the, at the end of the Shemitah. It's going to be a solar eclipse the same day. When that, we talked about the tower, putting this all together. When that tower, when they, they just recently put the spire to make it the tallest in America, the day they put it up was another solar eclipse. And you know, when the last time, Sid, when a solar eclipse happened on Elul 29, it was 1987, you had the greatest wipeout of Wall Street in history right after that. Whether it happens in this period or not, and I'd be ready, I believe without any question, a great shaking is coming to America. And this shaking will affect the economy, will affect the financial realm, well, uh, and can be very well more than either of those realms, but it will affect that. Something like a famine in the land. I believe uh, even services and infrastructure will, will stop. Will be, so I believe a great warning, and it's in God's mercy. Because at this point, without shaking, I don't believe there can be revival. God's heart is revival. But we have to be ready. Anything that can be shaken will be shaken. Okay, when you get to the seventh Shemitah, you get, you, that's, that's seven times seven years, 49 years, it leads to the Jubilee. So right. even the Jubilee is linked to the mystery of the Shemitah. Jubilee is about restoring, getting back your land, getting back your home, you're restored to your inheritance. Well, 2,000 years ago, Israel lost its inheritance, lost the land. Well, what happened is, remember that the Jubilee only comes, starts at the year after a Shemitah. Well, the restoration of Israel begins 1917 with a Balfour Declaration when they give the land back to Israel, Britain. 1917 follows the year of the Shemitah. It's the, it's the next thing. It's like Jubilee. It's restoration of the land. If you go seven Shemitahs later from 1917, it brings you to 1967, the restoration of Jerusalem, right after the year of the Shemitah. So I mean, precise. It, it is so, the restoration. And the next one is coming. The, the next, if you go seven more Shemitahs, it comes to two. The next Shemitah is 2015. The year after is 2016. I'm not saying God has to, but it's amazing what he's done. He's just amazing. He's in charge of everything. Again, we can't put God in a box, but isn't it amazing? The Shemitah holds the mystery, really, of everything.